welcome back let's continue with our exercise uh, this exercise which we have analyzed already uh, if you can check this exercise we are required to record the information in the cash book receipts you see now and the total total only cost of sales so what i'm going to do here i'm going to make sure that uh, i total them just to show you and they say the cash is bank daily. In other words, you don't have to worry about uh, checking whether you have got two transactions on the same day or not. But again, you must know how to do that. And also you need to do what you call the petty cash general. But they say this question says you must not uh, total, but I'm going to total just so that you can be able to know what's going on. Okay. So now we must go to the first transaction where we have to record uh, uh, the information. The first transaction, remember here we're doing the CBR, as you can see here. So I'm go and check the tra first transaction where I said, can you see now? The first transaction is on the first. The source document is RT478, details is L4. Can you see now? So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the cash book receipts. Can you see now? And then under source document here, I'm going to make sure that I record the source document which is RT, you can see that is the RT, you can see now, and then the date was on the first, can you see now, and then the details, as you can see, the details here is going to be L Foster, can you see now, I'm just going to write L Foster, I hope it makes sense, okay, and then L Foster, no problem, let's go ahead and check the information, um the L Foster gave us the capital. In other words, the owner brought capital into the business. And again, be careful here, that money was paid directly. So it's important to know this because if it was paid directly, it means it went directly to the bank. And the other thing that we need to check, this is capital of 179,000. The capital contribution in the form of cash, for example, the cash is not vertical. So this is not vertical. This is not vertical. It is very much important for you to know that there is no vert implication because that is capital in the form of cash. Can you see now? So we must go and record 179. We must not worry about whether the amount is taxable or not. Can you see now? We just have to go and record. Okay, now let's go back and record. So it means uh, before we can do that, I prefer us to make sure that we have to note that this bank account is the main account. So it's better for you. You don't have to do it. I'm just saying it will help you. It's the main account, meaning everything will end up uh, coming to the bank account. And at the same time, I prefer you to write on top this now. And just say, for example, this, I'm just going to say include there. It helps a lot, you will see. Uh, meaning the amount which must come here, as long as they are vertible, you must include that. Uh, obviously, the other one is that. And then here, you must always exclude that. You see now, under sales. And thereafter, even under the sundry here, the sundry amount, you must exclude that. This will help you a lot. And then again, the cost of sales, you must exclude that. As you can see here, we only include that under the main account. So this will always help you a lot. Okay? Now, so it means how much is the amount? Remember, the amount is 179000 Okay? So that amount is 179,000. It means what must we do? We must check. That amount was for capital. So if you can check here, there is no column for capital. Can you see now? There is no column for capital. So now it means if there is no column, you must come and record under what? Under the sundry. So that amount will come here under the sundry, and you just put the amount as it is, as 179. And this 179, you must show that this amount is for capital. Can you see now? And 
then you just have to write capital. Can you see now? You just write capital here. Just write capital. And then that capital, obviously, can you see we put it here? There's no VAT uh, implication. And then thereafter, you must just come here and then put the amount. Remember, the amount must come to analysis. But the fact that they said directly, can you see now? The fact that they said directly. It means it must go directly to the bank. So you must not put it under the analysis. So you must come here and put it under what? Under the bank. Can you see now? Here you can just put zero or dash. So can you see now? So this is how you must record. So remember, if it was not direct, you were supposed to record under analysis and thereafter transfer to the bank. I hope this one makes sense. Okay? Let's go to the second one. Uh, if you check the second one here, where we said, see, remember we're recording under CBR. We just have to check where it says CBR. So wherever it says CBR, we are going to record. Okay? So even this one on the 8th, we said CBR. So we must go to the CBR. Okay? But you can see here for the case sales, and we've got 60% on the markup. So there are different ways of doing that. But remember, I always told you that as the beginner, you must analyze, but you don't have to always analyze, okay? So as long as it makes sense, it's okay. But immediately when I see this 60% on cost, if I were you, I'll come here and analyze quickly. I'm going to say cost price. Can you see now? And I'm going to say markup, the same thing that we have done before. Remember, I'm a beginner. I don't understand the complicated way of dealing with these things, okay? I've got selling price. So you must analyze like this so that you can avoid making mistakes. Okay, so remember, any technique is allowed, but I say as a beginner, I want you to analyze like this. And now you must check that they say markup is on cost. So obviously, uh, you need to make sure that you make the right decision. So the markup is how much? is 60%, you put 60%. But the fact that they say the markup is on cost, it means the cost itself is 100%. I think you know by now. As long as you are the member of this family, you understand why we put 100 here. Okay. And obviously, the selling price will be 160. Remember, like I said, any technique is allowed. Can you see now? And after doing that, this is going to help you by the time when you calculate selling price or cost price, depending on whether they give you the selling price or not. Okay. Let's look at the question. They gave you a sell, this is the selling price of how much? Of 39. You must ask yourself, is this 39 inclusive of VAT or not? But if you can check on top there, we've got a statement that says all amounts are inclusive of VAT unless VAT is not applicable. We know for sure that VAT is applicable on the sales. It means this 39,000 is inclusive of VAT. So we need to make sure that we go and record this amount of 39,648. Can you see now? So this is what I prefer us to deal with. So because this amount is inclusive of VAT, we need to make sure that we go and put it under the right column. So firstly, I'm going to go and put what? The date. I'm going to put the source document. I'm going to put the details. That's the first thing that I'm going to do, OK? Let's go and put the source document first. So the source document here is DCS232. I'm going to put DCS232 like that. Okay. I hope it makes sense. Okay. And then thereafter, the date is the 8th. Yes, it was the 8th. And then we sold to, if I check my question, uh, we sold to Jeff Wilson. I'm going to come here and record. Jeff Wilson. Okay. Jeff Wilson. So that's the first thing that I will need to do. Okay. Jeff Wilson. Okay. But firstly, that amount of how much? The sale itself. I think it was 39. I think yeah, 39. The amount of 39. I must decide. Remember, whatever comes to the analysis also go to the bank. So because 
in the bank we record the amount inclusive of that. Can you see now? I must first put it here. Remember, before we go to the bank, I must first put it here. That's 39. Okay. So this is the amount, including that. That's why I put it here. Can you see now? And they told you that this amount must be transferred daily. Can you see now? So it means I must take this amount and also transfer it to us, to the bank. Can you see now? And transfer it to the bank. So I want you to understand how to do it. Usually we just analyze or we just underline to show that we are ready to go to the bank. Okay. So that's how we must do it. So here we record amount including. So you must be careful. If the amount is including, you must always put it into the bank. But before we go to the bank, we go to the analysis. We only go to the bank directly if they told us to do so. Can you see now? If this amount of sale was excluding VAT, it was supposed to be recorded under sales. So you need to be careful. There. So immediately after recording that, you need to make sure that you go and calculate what VAT. Can you see now? When it comes to VAT, especially on this kind of transaction, I want you to save your time. It's either you're going to use 15 over 100 when you calculate VAT, if the amount excludes VAT. Okay? Or you will use 15 over 115. If the amount include VAT. So you just have to use this two, you have to decide. So remember, you need to calculate the VAT here using this amount. And this amount is including VAT. So what does this mean? It means I'm going to take this amount and multiply it by what? By 15 over 1 on 5 because the amount is including VAT. So what I'm going to do at the bottom here, just to show you the calculation, I'm going to say uh, this amount of uh, 39,000, as you can see here, the amount of 39,000 here, I'm going to multiply it by 15 divided by 115. And then how much will be my VAT? I'll calculate the VAT shortly. Let me do it. 39, 6, 8. Point five times 15 divided by 115. I got 517. 5171.54. Do you see now? That I found. So I'm just going to go and read under that I see. Okay, under that, can you see how easy is that? And immediately when we record the VAT here, we can easily find the sale. How do we do that? We just say 39648 minus Let me correct this. Mm, so the virus is dealing with us, okay? So, okay, I'm just gonna put it here. Three, four, four, seven, six, point nine, six. Okay, that's where I'm at. Right? Can you see how easy is that? So the difference just to thirty-nine thousand your minus VAT and you get the same. Can you see now? So you need to be careful here, guys. So after doing that, is then that you must come and make sure that you calculate cost of sales because the cost of sales is calculated 
for every cell. So you must, because we've got the cell now, we calculate cost of cells. But we must first analyze cost of cells. Remember, we must first analyze cost of cells like the way we analyzed it. Can you see now? So let me just take this and put it somewhere there so that you can see. I'm going to put it here. I'm calculating cost of sales now. Okay. Do it. So this is how we analyze our markups. So we are calculating cost of sales here. I'm going to put question mark in line with of sales. I'm going to use this sales excluding VAT. Remember, it's excluding VAT. I use the amount of sales excluding VAT, which is how much? Which is 34,000. Can you see this 34? The one that I highlighted, I'm going to use that amount. So I'm going to put it in line with the sale. Remember, any technique is allowed. You can use your own technique. So I'm going to do that. Can you see now? So make sure that always use this column to calculate cost of sales. Why? Because we must always use selling price excluding VAT to calculate cost price, because the cost price must also exclude VAT. If you use this one, it's going to be incorrect because these figures are including VAT. That's why I prefer you to calculate cost of sales as the last thing, because now you can see the sale that you are going to use to calculate. Please make sure that you show calculations because it will help you, especially where you use the wrong figures. I can give you the part now. Okay. So now let's calculate and see how do we calculate cost of sales here. Remember, whenever we put question mark, we put 100 on top. 100 divide. Wherever I put the amount, I divide with divide by 160 and I multiply by the amount that I'm using. 76.96. Okay. Times 100. Divide by 160. I get something like 21548. what I got. This you can try it from your side. Okay. That's what I got. So this is the amount that I got. So this amount is the amount which must be recorded under cost of sales. So under cost of sales, I'm going to record this amount. I hope it makes sense. So you need to be careful when it comes to this kind of transaction. Okay, that was the A. Now let's go and check the next one. Sorry, my slides are a bit blurry today, but as long as it's feasible enough. Okay, on the nine, it goes to PCJ. I'm not dealing with the PCJ, I'm gonna ignore this one. But on the 19th, it goes to the CBR. So I must go and record. And again, you can see here, we sold inventory, the markup is 60%. So the markup is the same as the one that I used. So I'm going to use the same markup. But I'm going to record the 19th, and I'm going to record the source document, DCS234, and I'm going to record the details before I can come to the amount, OK? OK, that will be the 19th. On the 19th, I'm going to start with this, the source document. I'm going to go down there and put the source document on the 19th. Okay, that is the source document, and then that was the 19th, and then the details we sold to Finlay. If you can check up there, we sold to Finlay. Remember, you can also put cash sales if you don't want to write the name of the person to whom you sold. Okay, you can just write it like this. Can write case sales if you want. 
Click yes. Click like this. Yes. You can right click sales. Because next time they won't give you the name of the customer. So what must you do? You must just write case sales case now. So I think let me just I think you understand if I can say case like this as you can understand. So next time you can write case sales if you want. If they didn't give you the name of the person, okay. And then how much are the sales? If you go up there, the selling price was forty-five thousand two hundred and fifty-six. 45,256. This amount is including VAT, remember? Because they said all the amounts are including VAT, unless it's stated otherwise. So I'm going to go and put it under what? Remember, it's not direct. I'm going to first put it under my analysis. You see? And I must also put it into the bank. Remember, they said we bank daily up there. Can you see now? And then I can just draw a line to show that I was ready to go to the bank. Can you see now? Draw the line there. Can you see now? The same procedure. And now we must calculate VAT. We ask ourselves, is this amount including VAT or excluding VAT? It is including VAT, meaning I'm going to use 15 over 115 to calculate. Can you see now? So if I say 4, 5, Gonna have a calculation here. Let me delete this one. I'm gonna say four five times fifteen divided by one and five. How much we get? Let's see how much we get with the calculator. Please check it from your side. I get something like five thousand nine hundred and you see, that's what I got. That is the amount of VET. This is the VET that I got. So I'm going to come here and put it here under VET. Can you see now? I'm put it here under VET. Can you see now? And therefore, I say 45,256 minus VET of 59. How much do I get? Let's see on the calculator. I get something like 39,000. Yes. That's the difference between the two amounts. That's how I got that one. Okay. Okay. So thereafter, we must calculate the cost of sales the same way we did that there. Okay, so we can calculate cost of sales. I'm just going to put question mark here, but now the amount that I must use to calculate cost of sales is going to be the sales one that I just use now. It's going to be this one. So we use this to calculate it. Now we can say how will the calculation look like? It's going to be like 100 over 160 times the sum. Can you see now? And how much do I get? I get 224,000. Five hundred and ninety-five points. So that will be my cost of sales. Remember the other way. That's why I'm saying you just choose the technique that you want. You can also say this amount. This is how you can calculate. You can say this amount of sales. You can say this divide by one point six. We still get the same answer. You still get the same answer. So it's up to you, but I just want you to stick to one technique. So some of you prefer the decimals, but it's the same thing, just that you can still get the same answer. It's up to you, but it's the same thing. So, but this one for me, because you have it on, on your face, you can be able to put question mark and do that. Can you see now? 100 on top because of question mark there, 
one six at the bottom because I put the amount there. Can you see it's the same thing? So it's up to you. You see the one on top here. Here you could have said 34476 divided by 1.6 is up to you. So any technique is allowed. That was the 19. Uh, what else? We have got the one on the 20th. This one goes to this PCJ. I'm going to ignore it for now. And on the 21st, we have got something called CDR. So we must record the one on the 21st. Let's quickly do that. I'm going to put the source document first on the 21st. Source document. That was the 21st. And then we sold to Scott. Remember, you can either write Scott or same price. It's up to you. Um, let's do this. You can see Scott or same price. I just want to fit it here. Or we can say cash sales. Like that. I think you understand what I'm trying to say, can you see? And then you must check how much was the sale. Let's see, and let's check the sale on the 21st. Can you see the amount is 26783, inclusive of that. Can you see now? But the markup is 30%. Okay, it's going to be 26789. I'm going to go and record that. Two six seven nine. I'm going to record it here, and I'm also going to record it here. Can you see? And I can just underline to show that I am ready to transfer. Can you see? Sorry, guys, I don't have a ruler. And then I must go. Is it two six? Yes. I must go and calculate that. Remember the vet. Which one are we going to use? We're going to use fifty over one hundred five because the amount is including that. So I'm going to just do this. So I'm just going to do that. You can see this amount times 15 over 1 and 5. And then how much do I get? Let's use the calculator. So if I use the calculator, I get this amount for that. You see, 3494.22. So I'm going to come and put it here. You see, 3494.22. Now I say 26, 789 minus 34. And then how much do I get? I get a sale of 23,294. I'm going to put it here. Remember, you just have to find the difference between them. Okay, so we just said this amount minus this amount very easy you start with that take this amount then minus this amount to get this one can you see now so we need to be careful there. and now we need to come and calculate what the cost of sales but now remember the markup has changed now the markup is 30. meaning here's going to be one third here you see now and then and obviously i'm going to change this I'm still trying to calculate cost of sales. I'm going to leave the question mark there. But with which amount? With the amount that I just calculated. Mm. Mm, let's see how do I just want to do it over here. Okay, let me see what I can do. Let me just take everything somewhere here so that it can make sense. Mm, so I delete this. Delete. delete. So this one, I'm just going to be, so the mockup is going to be like that. And then obviously I'm going to use this save. Can you see now? So we must use this sale to find the cost of sale. So it's going to be 100 divided by 130 times this amount. 
and how much do I get? Uh, I get two, six, seven, eight, nine. I get two, six, seven, eight, nine. It's enough. And I'm gonna put it here, two, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so just like that. Can you see now? Again, maybe if you wanted to do that, you can just say two, three, two. Can you, you can say this amount. It's up to you. You can do it if you want. You can do that. That amount, you can divide it by 1.3. Can you see now? You still get the same answer. You will still get the same answer, which is this amount. Can you see now? So it's up to you. You can either do this or that. It's the same. Can you see now? That was the training first. So now let's go to the last one. The last one there is going to be 31st bank statement. We this is so we said CBR. So you must also record this one on the 31st. The source document is bank statement, Silver Fan Bank. So I'm gonna make sure that I go and record. It's PS. Okay, that was the 31st. And then the name of the bank is Silver Bank. I think they wanted to say Sylvester's Bank. This is my bank. Okay. Sylvester's Bank. So I forgive them. Okay. And then how much? This is 50, can you see now, 50 from the bank statement. So remember, like I said before, the minute you see the word direct, directly, you see an amount on the bank statement, you see an EFT. Just know that you must always go directly to the bank. You go directly to the bank when you see this kind of thing. So you must always go directly to the bank if you see them. Can you see now? So every time you see that, you must go directly to the bank. So the question will always give you the information. Okay. So it means you must come here. You cannot put it here. You can just write zero. But the amount is how much? It's 50,000. You just have to go and record 50,000 directly, like this one on top. Can you see that? This was directly, but even the bank statement amount are direct. So you're going to put 50,000 there. And then that was for the loan. Uh, you check if you have got any loan column here. The fact that you don't have a loan column here, you just have to come to this sundry and you put that 50,000 here. And then obviously, you must write the account that's the loan because the loan did not have an account there. Can you see now? So you can just write loan here. Can you, see? you can just write loan, and this loan comes from Silver Bank. Can you see now? You can just do that. So I'm just going to delete this. So I think you, you understand. So I'm just going to, because of space, I'm going to just say from the Silver Bank. Can you see now? That's how you calculate. Can you see now? And then after what you do, you just have to total everything. You see, total everything and make sure that uh, you get the totals. Can you see now? Um, let's see. Totaling. But I think totaling can do it on your own. But because of time, now what you must you do, I prefer you to write at the bottom here. This will help you because bank is an asset and bank is increasing. So you just have to write David at the bottom and the other will be the opposite. Yeah? This will help you in future. We'll see trade. Everything there will be trade, except cost of sales, which will be what? David. So this one is all about the accounting principles. Remember, bank is an asset. Assets increase on the David side. This one is a liability decrease on the credit side. But what you can do as an exam technique, just know the main account and do the opposite. And But the cost of sales, because it's an expense, will always have this, will be the same as well. At the main account. I hope that it makes sense. Thank you very much. Okay.